uh, 16 and 34 name the different type of particle found in the nucleus of this type of atom so what are the particles present inside the nucleus this will contain neutron and protons what is the term for total number of particles in the nucleus so the total number of the particle inside the nucleus, what we call this, we call that as nucleon number. What is the total number of particle in the nucleus of an atom of this element? So how we can work out the total number of particles inside the nucleon number, the top number is a nucleon or the higher number is a nucleon number. So here 34, so this will have 34 particles. What is the electronic structure of X ion which is having a charge of 2 minus? 2 minus means it took extra electrons. The proton number is 16. So for a neutral atom, there are 16 protons and 16 electrons. But minus 2 means it, it is having 18 electrons. So when we have to arrange 18 electrons, the first shell will have 2 electrons. The second shell will have 8 and the third shell as well as eight electrons. So it will complete a noble gas configuration. So just a formula for compound form between aluminium and this element X with a charge two minus. So aluminium belongs to group three. So the charge, the valency is plus three and this element belongs to group six. That's why it's minus two. First we simplify the valency and then cross multiply. So this will be Al2 and X What is uh, what term is used to describe atoms of same element but different uh, number of particle inside the nucleus? What we call we call them as isotopes. Identify the atom against which the relative masses of all atoms are compared. So which element we compare? We compare with carbon twelve. What is the name of amount of any substance that contains 6 exponent 23 particle that's called a mole of a substance? The constant 6 exponent 23 has a name. What is the name? That is known as the Avogadro's constant. Part of the definition of relative atomic mass is average mass of naturally occurring atoms of element. Some relative atomic masses are not whole numbers like element Y has two types of atoms, 29 and 71. The ratio of element is 3 to 2. Calculate the relative atomic mass. Because they are not in the same ratio, so we'll, we cannot take a simplest, simple average like 69 plus 71 divided by 2 not like this because there is a there are they are in not in the same uh, proportion or ratio so it will be 69 is three times as compared to like the ratio between them 3 is to 2 so if you have three particles or three atoms of y 69 the two atoms will be 71 so how to find the relative atomic mass when we have these ratios So the proportion that is 3 and how much 69 per plus the ratio of y2 multiply how much is there 71 and divide by sum of the ratio which is 3 plus 2 equal to 5. This is how we take an average when we have the ratio. But when both are in the same proportion we just add them and divide by or divide by the total number of the values. So when we work out here, it will be 69.8. Then identify element Y. So from relative atomic mass, so you have to use a periodic table in which you have atomic mass of 69.8.
then so when we check 69.8 zinc is 65 so gallium is there which is 70 the nearest one that's why it is gallium So we have to identify this element, which is gallium. Element Z is in period three and group five. Identify this element. So again, we have to use a periodic table. Period three, the third period, and group five. So this one is period one, two, three. This is period three and group five. So which one it matches with phosphorus? So the element is phosphorus. In terms of electron transfer, why Z behave chemically as a non-metal? So why the element is a non-metal or behave like a non-metal? The general tendency of non-metal, they tend to gain electron. So why it form, behave like a non-metal? Because it gained three electrons during a reaction, chemical reaction. Magnesium is a metal uh, name and describe bonding in the magnesium. So because when is a metal, it will have a metallic bonding. And what happened in a metallic bonding? There is a lattice of a positive ion. In C of electron held together by strong electrostatic force. Magnesium oxide is formed and magnesium burns in oxygen. The complete dot and cross diagram to show the electron arrangement in the ion. So magnesium is the electronic configuration for magnesium. It's two, eight and two. So it will lose the valence shell electron. So the second shell, it will have eight electrons. And for oxygen, the electronic configuration is 2 and 6. So it will take two more electrons uh, from magnesium to complete octet. 6 already belongs to oxygen. And 2 from magnesium. So the charge plus 2 because it lost 2 electrons and charge minus 2. Write a chemical equation for reaction that occur when magnesium burns in oxygen. So when magnesium burns in oxygen, magnesium, because it's a metal, so it exists as atomic. Oxygen is a non-metal, so it exists as diatomic and form magnesium oxide. The formula for magnesium oxide, magnesium valency is plus 2 and oxygen is minus 2. So when we simplify the valency and cross multiply, the magnesium oxide formula will be MgO. So first one mark is for completing our product. The second one is balancing. When you balance, start with oxygen followed by hydrogen and then other elements. So two oxygen, I will put two oxygen as balance and then I will balance magnesium. Magnesium 
oxide also form and magnesium nitrate is heated strongly and this is an endothermic right a chemical equation so this is a thermal decomposition the magnesium nitrate on heating decompose into magnesium oxide plus nitrogen dioxide plus oxygen and the equation must be balanced so we have two magnesium nitrate molecule give two magnesium oxide and four nitrogen dioxide so we'll observe a brown gas because of nitrogen dioxide what type of reaction is this So this is a thermal decomposition reaction. Name two other compound of magnesium that form magnesium oxide when heated. So it can be magnesium hydroxide. And magnesium. Carbonate. Magnesium carbonate on heating gives magnesium oxide plus carbon dioxide and magnesium hydroxide, magnesium oxide plus water molecules or steam. Sulfur dioxide SO2 is used in manufacture of sulfuric acid. In the first stage of the process, sulfur dioxide is obtained from sulfur containing ore. To name one of these ores. So that is a zinc blend. The next stage of the process is a reaction in uh, which can reach equilibrium. Describe two features of equilibrium. Because it's of two mass, so rate of forward reaction equal to rate of backward reaction and there's no change in concentration. No change in concentration of reactant and product. Uh, name catalyst used. So we use vanadium pentoxide V2O5. Why is the catalyst used to speed up the reaction? Explain in terms of particle why high temperature is the rate of the reaction. So increase in temperature increases the kinetic energy. Which cause more collagen. Which leads or build up. Uh, the or number of the collagen increases. That's why the rate of the reaction will also increase or greater number of the particle will have energy more than activation energy. In this stage, only a moderate temperature around 450. Why does this, uh, what does this suggest about the forward reaction? The forward reaction is exothermic. That's why we are using, not trying to increase the temperature too much. Otherwise that will release the, uh, that will reduce the rate of the, uh, that will reduce the yield of the uh, reaction, like amount of product. Calculate the percentage by mass of a sulfur and sulfur trioxide. So what is the percentage of, so if we need a percentage of a sulfur, that is mass of sulfur in a compound divided by mass of compound 
into 100. So sulfur is 32, so that will be 32. Divide by total mass of a compound, so 32 plus 16 times 3. And that is multiplied by 100. So it will be 40 percent. Concentrated sulfuric acid is dehydrating agent, which is which can chemically remove the water from substance. If it is physically removing the water, then it's called a drying agent, and chemically removing, then we call dehydrating. Both hydrated copper to sulfate and sucrose can be completely dehydrated by concentrated sulfuric acid. Uh, name the solid product form in each case. Hydrated copper to sulfate. If we add sulfuric acid, so the water will be removed and it will form anhydrous copper sulfate. Where for glucose, it will form a carbon as the water is removed. When propane one all is heated with concentrated sulfuric acid as a catalyst, an unsaturated hydrocarbon with a relative molecular mass of 42 is formed and one other product is there. What is meant by unsaturated hydrocarbon? The definition of unsaturated hydrocarbon means a compound which contains a double or a triple bond or does not have any single bond. Write a chemical equation, so propane, propane one all, prop me general formula of alcohol CNH2N plus 1OH, so C3H7OH. And it will form a compound hydrocarbon, hydrocarbon means it contains carbon and hydrogen, so it will form C3 and H6, because 12 multiplied by 336 plus 642 plus one product that will be water. Name unsaturated hydrocarbon. What is this unsaturated hydrocarbon? That will be prop E. This question is about the reaction of bases and acids. Ammonia is a gas at room temperature. What is the test for ammonia? Describe the positive result. It is uh, damp red litmus. And it will turn blue. Ammonia reacts with water to form ion. How does this equation show that ammonia behave like a base. Bases are proton accepted, so means water is donating proton and ammonia is accepting. That's why it turned into ammonia mine. So how we can say it is a base because it accepts proton or H plus ion. You don't. If you say hydrogen, then it will be wrong. Aqueous ammonia is described as a weak base. So what is the pH of the weak base? So you can write around 10 or 11. Describe what is seen when aqueous ammonia was added to copper until no further change seen. So when we add like aqueous ammonia, first we'll observe a blue precipitate and then the precipitate will dissolve and it will form a deep blue solution. So blue PPT which dissolve to give deep blue solution. Aqueous sodium hydroxide is a strong alkali that reacts with dilute sulfuric acid exothermically. Uh, what type of reaction is this? So aqueous sodium hydroxide react with sulfuric acid. So when acid is reacting with base, so what we call this, we call that as neutralization. Complete the equation for reaction between aqueous sodium hydroxide and dilute sulfuric acid. So 
acid react with alkali gives salt and water but what will the formula of salt so because it will form sodium sulfate so sodium is group 1 and sulfate molecular ion with valency minus 2 so it will form na2 so4 plus h2 and the equation must be balanced so we need four hydrogen that's why we put two the next part which is related to the moles topic calculate the concentration of sulfuric acid in mole per dm cube using the following step number of moles of noh in 25 cm cube if you have 25 cm cube and what is the concentration the first part d the student want to find the concentration of sulfuric acid by titration method and he use found 25 cm cube 0.4 mole per dm cube 0.04 mole per dm cube sodium hydroxide react with 20 cm cube of sulfuric acid name a suitable indicator use so we can use a phenolphthalein or methyl orange then we need the moles so we have the volume and we have the concentration so moles equal concentration into volume concentration is given 0.04 and the volume is 25 but that's cm cube so we should divide by 1000 to convert into decimeter cube so we'll get the moles which is 0.001 then number of moles of sulfuric acid so to get the moles of sulfuric acid we only have the volume so we have to use a ratio the ratio is 2 is to 1 so the ratio between sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid h2so4 it is 2 is to 1 when we have 0.001 so this will be x cross multiply so that will be half of the first value So 0.0005, and then we need uh, concentration. Concentration is moles by volume. So we got the moles 0.0005 divided by volume. That's 20 cm cube, but it should be in dm cube. So divide by 1000. that will be the concentration of sulfuric acid which is 0.025 calculate the concentration from mole per dm cube to gram per dm cube so when we are converting mole per dm cube to gram per dm cube so simply what we have to do we have to multiply because we have to convert moles into uh, mass, gram so we'll multiply by molar mass and the molar mass of sodium hydroxide sorry uh, yeah sodium hydroxide sodium is 23 oxygen is 16 so 39 plus 1 so that will be 40 so this answer 0.025 will be multiplied by 40 to convert this answer into gram per dm cube which is sorry uh, this was 0.0 uh, 0.025 is the concentration for sulfuric acid but we need for sodium hydroxide that's why it should be 0.04 multiplied by 40 which is equals to 1.6 g per decimeter ethanol is manufactured by two different processes for each process name organic reactant and the type so we can manufacture ethanol uh, one by sugar and the reaction will be fermentation and the other one is by reaction of ethene with steam and that reaction is called hydration catalytic hydration or hydration so we use glucose and the reaction is called fermentation and we can use ethene 
because we just have to name organic reactor, not both reactants. And then that's called hydration. Addition of hydrogen is called hydration, catalytical hydration or hydration. Alcohols can be oxidized to form carboxylic acid. Name a suitable oxidizing agent. So we have to learn the name of this oxidizing agent. We use acidified potassium manganate 7. You should mention acidified because otherwise it will not be effective oxidizing agent. Alcohols can be partially oxidized to form aldehyde. Aldehydes are homologous series of organic compound. Partial oxidation is achieved by reacting an alcohol with oxidizing agent in a distal apparatus as shown. Uh, name apparatus A, so that's a Liebig condenser. On the diagram, use an arrow where the water enters, so the cold water enters and the hot water will leave. The table shows some information about aldehydes. Did you use a journal formula? I'll complete the table first. So how we can complete two carbon at three carbon prop, four carbon butte. So one carbon, it will be meth. They will have a single bond N and because of aldehyde, they all have Al. So it will be methanol. And the butte means four carbon. And you can clearly see the number of hydrogen are twice. If one carbon, two hydrogen, two carbon, four hydrogen, three carbon, six hydrogen. So four carbon, it will have eight hydrogen and then oxygen. So general formula we can deduce it will be Cn, H2n. What is the name given to reactive part of an organic molecule? The part which the effects the chemical properties we call that as functional group. Complete dot and cross diagram. So you can for to complete this dot and cross diagram, you have to use a structure which is given. A single line shows that a pair of electron double line shows that two pairs are there. So dot and cross, they're using a dot for carbon. So because there is a single line between carbon and hydrogen, so single bond. Here, so it will have double bond. Oxygen belongs to group 6, so it will share 2 and unshared will be 4. So it is important that you draw the unshared electron off. Oxygen. Propanone belongs to a homologous series that's called a ketone. Ketones have the same C double bonded with O, but the C double bonded with O, the carbonyl group is not at the end. It is between in the not at the end of the chain. Propanone has the same molecular formula as propanol. What is the term used to describe a molecule with different structure but same molecular formula? We call them as isomers. Suggest so structure of propanone and show all the atoms and all the bond. So prop means three carbon and on means C double bonded with O at not at the end in between. Then this will have three hydrogen because carbon maximum can form four bond. And this will have three hydrogen. 